Firefighter Jeff. I'm a firefighter from Indianapolis. And this is a special place for us, for a lot of you that, that don't know, because this is where this program started 25 years ago. We did our first Casey program ever, and it was to the kindergartners here, who my son was one of. So we just did it on a whim, and we're back. Um, and this is just a special place for us to come, and especially right this year to celebrate 25 years. So this is, again, our 25th year. By the end of this school year, this program will have taught more than 6 million children about fire and life safety. And we've been credited with saving 17 lives to date uh, um, with our program. So again, it, it just means a lot for us to be here. So when, as you came in, you probably noticed that I brought a couple special friends. Did you notice my friends? Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about my friends. Both the dogs that you see are girls. They're both black Labrador retrievers and they have four jobs. Their first job is they're just the family dogs that live in my house. So they like to do things like anyone else's dog. They like to run and play and play ball. On a bright sunny day, you know how the sun comes shining in through the window and it makes a big warm spot on the carpet? Yeah. They like to find that warm spot and take naps. They don't get to do that very often because we spend most of our days like we are today, teaching young people fire and life safety. We're, we're teaching more than 400 programs in a year to over, more, over 400,000 students every year all across the country. We're the only full-time nationally touring fire prevention program in the country. Their second job do what we call search and rescue dogs. They're trained to find people who are lost. Do you guys ever get up in the morning and you're in a hurry getting ready to go to school? You walk out in the living room and you go, I wonder where I left my shoes. Yeah. Yes, walk around the house searching for your yeah. shoes. When you and I search for things, we use our eyes. When the dogs search, they use their eyes, but they use something else even more. What do they use? No. They use their noses. The reason they use their noses is because their noses are 250 million times better than yours and mine. It's a really big number, so let me try to make that make more sense. You know how everyone has different fingerprints? Yeah. To the dogs, all of us smell different. They can tell the difference between what each one of us smells like, even if we were more than two football fields away. Casey can sit in a boat and smell a drowning victim under 60 feet of water when she's sitting in the boat. So their noses are very sensitive. Their third job is what we call therapy dogs. These are the therapy dogs that are used in Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio at burn camp, which are special summer camps for children that have been severely burned. Now, every state in the country has a burn camp, which means every state in the country have enough children that have been severely burned to have their own burn camp. So the things we're trying to prevent don't just happen to someone else somewhere else. It can happen in any community, and that's why everyone needs to know their fire and life safety skills to help prevent or, or diminish those injuries. So their first job is they're the family job, family dog, their second job, their search and rescue dogs, their third job, they're the therapy dogs, and their fourth job is that they know their fire and life safety skills just like we want all of you to know. But before I ask them to start work, I should introduce them to you guys. Do you guys want to meet the dogs? Yeah. Well, I'm going to start off by introducing you to Casey. Casey knows that she gets introduced first. This is Casey. Casey is seven years old. She is the fifth generation Casey. Like, like I said, she's seven years old. As she gets up and moves around, you'll notice that she wears a badge on her collar from the Wayne Township Fire Department in Indianapolis. She is considered a firefighter, just like I am. Her training started the day I got her when she was eight weeks old, and she was trained every single day for three and a half years. At the end of that time, when the fire chief gave her her badge. To give you an idea how much Casey has grown, the day that she was born, she was the size of her nose, about the length of the palm of my hand. When she came home to live with me, she was eight weeks old. She weighed 11 pounds, and she was the size of her head. I carried her home in the palm of my hand. I quit doing that. Why do you think I quit? She got too big, so at eight weeks she weighed 11 pounds, and for the next seven months she gained a half a pound almost every day, till she got up to almost 100 pounds. I, 
I will let you know that I did ask her permission before I discussed her weight in public. So this is Casey. Can everyone say hi, Casey? Hi, Casey. Hey, Casey. Casey, can you tell everybody hello? Can you, can you say hi to everyone? Say hi. Big voice, Casey. Give, give him a big voice. Tell him. Tell him. Big voice. Oh, give me a bigger voice than that. Tell me. Oh, good job. Can you wave to everyone? Oh, they're going to wave back. Give them a nice pretty wave. Up high where everybody can see it. Oh, there's a nice wave again. High five. High five. High five with the other paw. Other paw. Yeah, good job. We're going to let Casey lay down and rest for a minute. Let me introduce you to my other special friend. This is Callie. We spell her name K-A-L-I. That's short for Calypso. Callie is just three years old. She's a baby. She's a big baby. What do we call baby dogs? A puppy. She's a puppy. She'll be a puppy till she's three and a half, which is really right about now. So she's just transitioning out, out of being a puppy. But since she's still a puppy, when she gets excited, she likes to bark. That's just part of being a puppy. So can everybody say, hi, Kelly? Hi! Callie, say hello. Good job. Can you give me a pretty wave? Let me see your pretty wave. Let me see it. Up high where everybody can see it. Oh, there's a beautiful wave. High five. Good job. All right. So they've been introduced. They're ready to start work. Let's talk about fire safety. Who can tell me something about fire safety that everyone should know? When there's a fire, where? Not at your home. Anywhere. On yourself. When you're on fire, stop, drop, and roll. Everyone say that with me. Stop, stop drop, drop, and roll. One more time. Stop, stop drop, drop, and roll. Very good. Now you do that when you're closer, when you're on fire. If there's a fire over in that corner, should I stop, drop, and roll? No. No. But if there's a fire over in that corner, you have a job to do. What is your job? You're, very good. Your job is not to put, not to put the fire out. That's a firefighter's job. Your job is to get out and stay out. If it was at home, should you ever go back in the house to get anything? No. What about your favorite toy? Should you go get your toys? No. What about if it was a brand new Sony PlayStation? No. Some of you hesitated. The answer is no. What about your dog or your cat? Should you go get them? Yeah. No. What about a baby brother or sister? Should you go get them? Yeah. No. It's a trick question. You don't go back in the house for any reason. Not for toys, not for pets, not even for a brother, sister, or mom. Yeah. Whose job is it to go save those things and those people? Yeah. It's the firefighters. You let them do their job. Your job is to get out and stay out. Once you get out, we want you to go to a place called the meeting place. If you don't know where your meeting place is, when you go home today, ask mom and dad where your meeting place is. It needs to be someplace outside of the house that does not move. A certain tree, a certain neighbor's porch, a certain mailbox, but you wouldn't say we're gonna meet next to the car because maybe the car wouldn't be there. So something that doesn't move. When you get there, we want you to count noses. So if there's you and a brother, mom and dad, how many noses should be in your meeting place? Or what if you had a friend spend the night? Five. There'd be five, so the number of noses in your meeting place should be the same as the number of people at your house at the time of the fire. Now, do you guys know how to pretend? Yeah. Let's pretend that Casey's clothes are on fire. She says she knows how to pretend. So let's see if she knows what to do. Casey, your clothes are on fire! Stop, drop, roll, stop, drop, roll. Again, good job. Now, Casey wants me to remind you that she can't come. I know I'm telling them. She's, she, she can't cover her face, but she wants you to cover your face and keep rolling until what happens? Until the fire goes out. Show me one more time, Casey. Good job. Oh, Kelly wants to show you that she can do it too. Okay, Kelly. Your clothes are on fire. Stop. Drop. Good job. All right. Now, when you go to sleep at night, do you sleep 
with your bedroom door open or closed? Some of you are saying open, some of you are saying closed. Now, when you go to sleep at night, what part of your body goes to sleep first? Wow, a lot of you remember that. It's your nose. I will tell you the most guessed answer are your eyes, but that's not correct. Some people think it's your ears, but your ears don't go to sleep at all. That's why alarm clocks make noise. First thing that goes to sleep and the last thing that wakes up is your nose. Let's talk about why it's important that you know that. If you went to sleep last night with your bedroom door open, doesn't matter whether it's open a lot or, or just a little bit, it doesn't matter, it's still open. So if, if you went to sleep last night with your bedroom door open, raise your hand. Wow, because a lot of you that said, knew, that, knew that your nose goes to sleep first, but a lot of you still raised your hand that you went to sleep with your bedroom door open. So let's talk about that. Let's say last night you were in your bed asleep, your bedroom door was open, and your house got on fire. Fire causes smoke, and if your door is open, that means the smoke can come right in and fill your room up. If you're lying in your bed asleep, which means your nose is asleep and your room fills up with smoke, are you going to be able to smell that smoke if your nose is asleep? No, you know that most people who die in a fire, it's not the fire that kills them. It's the smoke, and that's why we want you to always sleep with your bedroom door closed to keep the smoke out. We also want to make sure you have something else in your house that smells for smoke, and it never goes to sleep, and it looks something like this. A smoke alarm or smoke detector. It sits up on the ceiling or high on the wall and only does one thing. It sits up there all day and all night, and it does this. It sniffs. Now, you know what mom or dad think your favorite supper or how it makes the house smell really good? Yeah. If it smells that, it doesn't make any noise. Except for sometimes when dad's cooking. That's a problem. I can't love you. If it smells mom's perfume or dad's cologne, it doesn't make any noise. But if it's sitting up there and it smells smoke, it starts to make a noise. When you hear that noise, what is your job? Get out. To get out and stay out. It's a place called you're going to go to. The meeting place. When you get there, we want you to count noses. Very good. Now remember, your meeting place needs to be someplace that doesn't move. A certain tree, a certain neighbor's porch, a certain mailbox, but not something like a car. So when you go home today, make sure, ask mom and dad what the last yeah. time was. They checked your smoke detectors to make sure they work. They should check them by pressing on the button like I just did. Mom and dad should do that once a month. They should change the batteries twice a year. I'll give you an easy way to remember when it's time to change the batteries. Here in Indiana, we change the time on our clocks twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. When it's time to change the time on the clocks, it's time to change the batteries and the smoke detectors. That way you won't forget. For all the teachers in the room, if you look at the back of your smoke detectors, there's a manufacturer's date. If that date is more than 10 years old, even if the detector acts like it will work, they can't guarantee that it will actually work in a fire situation, and it needs to be replaced. If there is not a manufacturer's date on the back, it's definitely more than 10 years old and needs to be replaced. The only exception to that rule is a new smoke detector that's recently come out, and it's called a 10-year smoke alarm or smoke detector. It'll say that clearly on the outside of the box. If you have one of those, you just check them once a month and you don't do anything else to them for 10 years. At the end of 10 years, you just throw them away and put a new one up. That's the only exception. So let's go back to pretending. We're going to pretend that Casey and Callie are in their beds asleep. We're going to pretend this is their bedroom door. If they're in their bed asleep, should the door be open or closed? Closed. Closed, because what goes to sleep first? No. no, so Casey's in her bed asleep. The bedroom door is closed. She hears the smoke detector go off. She goes over to the door. What should she do before she opens the door? Feel the door. Feel the door to see if it's ah. hot. So she's feeling the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yeah. Yeah, the door's not hot. They can open the door and go out. We're going to have we're going to show you that again because Callie wants to show you that she can do it too. So Callie's feeling the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yeah. yeah, the door's not hot. They can open the door and go out. But Casey and Callie want you to try to know two ways out of every room. Everyone say that. Two ways out. Two ways out. If the door's the first way out, window. the window might be the other way. Our window's usually down on the floor. Now, if I want to pretend it's the window, I need to raise it up. 
So let's, this time they feel the door and see if they know what to do. So this time you feel the door and the door's hot. Out the window. Because they know how many ways out? Two ways out. Good job. All right. Now, I think we should give Casey a quiz. Do any of you ever have to have quizzes or tests or anything? So here's what we're going to do. Before I give Casey the real quiz, I need to get her warmed up. So I'm just going to ask her some questions to get her warmed up. You guys think dogs can answer questions? Yeah! Now some of you said yes, some of you said no. We need to get her warmed up because Casey doesn't have to take a lot of quizzes. Because she's a dog. I'm going to let Callie help her with the warm-up. When we get to the real quiz, Casey will have to do it by herself. But let me think of a question to ask. Okay, I've got one. Okay, girls. What do you call the top of a house? Oh, roof. Good job. Okay, I've got another one. I've got another one. What do you call the outside of a tree? Oh, bark. Good job. Okay, now wait a minute. Those are really easy questions. Maybe I need to ask a harder question. I know. I'm going to ask a baseball trivia question. Okay, I've got one. I've got one. Okay, girls. Which New York Yankee holds the record for the most home runs? <laughs> Babe Ruth, though, it was DiMaggio, but nice try. They got two out of three, right? They're warmed up. It's time for the real quiz. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Now, before we give Casey the quiz, let me explain to you something that I noticed. I noticed that when you and I are talking, Casey is listening to everything we said. I want to make sure that she really knows her fire and life safety skills. I want to make sure that I'm not giving away the answers to her while I'm talking with you. So. Before I tell you what the situation is for the quiz, before I tell you what it is, I need to cover Casey's ears up to make sure she can't hear us. So hang on a second, let me make sure Casey can't hear us. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? She can't hear us. This time I'm gonna tell her that she feels the door. I'm gonna say the door's not hot, can she open it? Yes, the door is not hot. She can open the door. This time when she opens the door, I'm going to tell her that she sees smoke. What direction does smoke always go? Uh, smoke always goes up. Where's the air you can breathe? Down. down by the floor. So when you see smoke, you need to get down and crawl under the smoke. Get down and crawl under the smoke. Now, don't tell Casey. Let's see if she knows what to do, but don't tell her. Okay, Casey, this time you check the door and the door is not hot. Are you with me so far? Okay, the door's not hot. So you open the door. But this time when you open the door, you see smoke. What are you gonna do? <coughs> Get on the floor. What are you gonna do next? <laughs> Crawl under the smoke. Good job, good job. <laughs> now, let's pretend this is a match and a lighter. If you find matches or a lighter laying around, what should you never do? Never touch them. Very good. Never touch them. Then what should you do? You should go tell whoever's in charge, mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, the babysitter. You should go tell them and have them go get the matches or the lighter and put them away. I want to make sure I'm very clear on this. You don't pick them up and take them to a grown-up because you're not supposed to touch them. You leave them right where they're at. You go tell a grown-up and you have the grown-up go get them and put them away. I told you at the beginning that Casey and Callie know their fire and life safety skills. What do you think so far? Have they done a pretty good job? Yeah! So if I show them this match and lighter, what should they not do? Touch it! Should not touch them, then what should they do? They should go tell a grown-up, well, I'm a grown-up, but they're dogs. How can they tell me? By barking? They tell me. Good job. Good job. Why do we have to know how to stop, drop, and roll, and how to check a door to see if it's hot? If we don't know how to do those things, what can happen to us? <laughs> Casey and Callie want you to know that if you don't know your fire and life safety skills, you 
interested in another dead dog. Good job. All right. Now, let's say you're in your bed asleep. You hear the smoke detector go off, you feel the door, and the door's hot. Should you open the door? No. Now, this time we're going to say you don't have another way out. Maybe you have a window, but it's up too high for you to use. It could be on the second floor or the third floor or even higher. Or maybe you don't have a window at all. Some bedrooms have a door, but no window. Either way, the door's hot, you don't have any other way out. Should you open the door? No. No. Fire, fire. Does that mean that you're trapped in your room? Yes. Yes. If you can't get out of your trap, whose job is it to come get you out? Yes. The firefighters. When firefighters go to fight fire, are we going to be dressed like I'm dressed right now? No. no. When we go to fight fire, we wear special clothes. Special pants and boots, a special coat and gloves, a helmet on our head, and a mask on our face so that we can see and breathe. So we look and sound different. If you're trapped in your room, there's a couple things we want you to do and a couple things we want you to not do. Let's talk about the things not to do first. Can you hide from smoke? No. No. Can you hide from fire? No. No, so during a fire, don't ever get into a hiding place. That means you never get under a bed during a fire. You never get into a closet during a fire. Because if you do, the only thing you're hiding from are the people coming to help you. And you want the firefighters to find you and get you out. So we want you to stay down on the floor because that's where the good air is at. Stay as close to the middle of the room as you can without getting under anything. When you hear the firefighters coming, we want you to yell and scream and make as much noise as you can. Because even in the middle of a bright sunny day, it's difficult for the firefighters to see you because of the smoke. But we can hear you just fine. The more noise you make, the quicker the easier it is for the firefighters to find, find you and get you out. So let's go through those skills with Casey and Callie one more time. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what the situation is. You have to tell me what you should do. We'll see if Casey and Callie can remember as well. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's start off with, what do you do when your clothes are on fire? Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Where do you put your hands? Cover your face, and you keep rolling until what happens? Yeah. Until the fire goes out. In case your clothes are on fire, stop, drop, roll. Again, stop, drop, roll. Good job. Callie, can you show them? Stop, drop. Let me see. Come on. Callie, drop. <laughs> Roll. Watching the two of them do that together is like watching football. Casey's the live action. Callie's the slow motion instant replay. If this is Casey and Callie's bedroom door and they're in their bed asleep, should the door be open or closed? Closed. Because what goes to sleep first? Your nose. So Casey goes over to the door. What does she do before she opens the door? She feels it to see if it's hot. She's feeling the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yes. yes. The door's not hot. They can open the door and go out. How many ways out of every room should you try to know? Yes. Two ways out. What might be the other way? Window. The window. So the girls, this time you check the door, the door's hot. Out the window. Because they know how many ways out? Yes. Two ways out. Out the window. Good job. This time Casey feels the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yes. yes. When she opens it, she sees smoke. What direction does smoke always go? Oh. Where's the area you can breathe? Down. Down by the floor. So when you see smoke, you get down and oh. crawl under the smoke. Good job. Now let's say that Casey and Callie come home from school one day. Some of you are laughing. You don't think they go to school? Wait, somebody said dog school. Do they go to regular school just like you? Wait a minute. Where are you at right now? School. Are you in regular school or dog school? Regular. Where are they at right now? Regular. Dog school, they're sitting in the same room you are. Did they go to regular school today? Yes, they came to your school. So see, they go to regular school just like you. We're going to say they got home. They found a lighter laying on the kitchen table. What should they never do? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Then what should they do? Go tell a grown up. If this ever happens to you when you go to tell a grown-up, don't bark. You use words, but how are Casey and Callie going to tell us? I'm working. Come on. Good job. Why do we have to know all those things? Why do we have to know how to stop, drop, and roll, and check a door to see if it's on? What happens if we don't know what to do? You could end up a dead dog. Let me see that dead dog again. All the way. 
Good job. You guys stand all of them. Give yourselves a hand. How many of you remember when we came and saw you last year? Remember the Casey song? All right. Well, this would be really cool. Okay, you guys go first. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Did you forget the words? Let's have a little refresher. Here's what, the words we're going to sing together are Casey the dog, nose fire, ain't no fun. If you see a fire burning, dial 911. I'll play that part and sing it so you know what it sounds like. The part we're going to sing together goes like this. Casey the dog was fire ain't no fun. If you see a fire burning, dial 911. You guys think you can sing that? Just to make sure everybody understood, we're going to sing Casey the dog, nose fire ain't no fun. If you see a fire burning, dial 911. Let's practice that part together. Here we go, everybody. That was okay. I bet when you guys sing your favorite radio stations and favorite CDs, I bet you guys sing louder than that. I bet when you guys practice singing in the shower, you sing louder than that. Yeah, I see a lot of you nodding your heads. You know, I used to practice this song in the shower all the time, but I ruined two of my guitars that way, so I had to grin. So let's practice it one more time. We're going to sing Casey the Dog, Nose Fire, Ain't No Fun. If you see a fire burning, dial 911. Here we go. Everybody. Casey the Dog, Nose Fire, Ain't No Fun. If you see a fire burning, dial 911. That was awesome. Let me tell you how the song works. There's two parts to the song. You've already learned the first part. The second part of the song is the part that I'm going to sing by myself. So here's how the song works. If I say everyone or everybody, we all sing the part we just practiced. If I say it's my turn, that means I'm going to sing and you'll need to listen. Does everyone understand? Just to make sure if I say everyone or everybody, we all sing the part we just practiced. If I say it's my turn, I'm going to sing and you'll need to listen. But here's the catch. I'm not going to tell you whose turn it is until right when it's time to sing. So you have to always be paying attention or you're not going to know whether it's your turn or not. You guys ready to give it a try? Yes. Pay close attention because you don't know who's going to start the song. Here we go. Everybody!
play with matches, why is her bad? If you see some laying around, go get mom and dad. If you see some laying around, go get mom and dad. Everybody, chase it down. Casey and Callie were fire and life safety dogs, which means we teach more than just fire safety. So we have one more message to talk to you about. It's about petting dogs that you don't know. Let's say you're out playing in the yard and a dog comes up to you that you don't know and they're wagging their tail. Is it okay to reach out and pet that dog? No! What does it mean when a dog wags their tail? It could mean they're happy. It means they're excited. Happy is one way of being excited, but so is being afraid and scared and angry. It's gonna look the same to us, it's just a dog wagging their tail. If that dog is afraid, scared, or angry, and you reach out to pet them, they could bite you. Before you pet a dog that you don't know, you must always ask the owner if it's okay. If the owner's not with the dog, what's the answer? No. No, you leave that dog alone. But if the owner gives you permission, then you can walk up to the dog slowly from the front. It's very important that the dog sees you coming. You're gonna hold your hand with your fingers and thumb tucked underneath. So if I wanted to pet Casey, do you think she can smell my hand from over here? She sure can. And this is plenty close enough for me to make sure that she's comfortable with me being this close. If the dog starts to growl or bark or back away, they're telling you the answer is no. Even if the owner says yes, the dog can still tell you no. But if the dog stays nice and relaxed, the next thing I can do is reach out to pet her. Does Casey look nice and relaxed? Yeah, I don't think she could be more relaxed and still be breathing. So the next thing I can do is reach out to pet her. Listen to the word I use there very carefully. I said you can pet the dog. I did not say you can pat the dog. So a nice, gentle touch is fine. This is okay. This is not okay. To the dog, that might feel like you're hitting them. If the dog's already a little afraid, it might cause them to bite you. The last thing is, is when you're petting a dog that you don't know, you don't put your face down by their face. Because if the dog were to decide to snap at you, your face is the closest thing. That's what they're gonna get a hold of. The reason I tell you this is because here in a few minutes at the end of the program, the dogs and I are going to be out in the hallway and you'll have a chance to pet them as you go by on your way back to your classroom. If you don't want to, you can just say no thank you and walk right by. But it'll be your chance to do that. But before we do that, do you want to see him do one more trick? Yeah! I'll tell you, this trick is, is very difficult for the puppy to do, but we'll see if we can get them both to do it. I'm going to put a treat on Casey's paw. I'm going to put one on Callie's paw. Why aren't they eating their treats? Because I haven't given him permission. Not only is Casey not eating it, she's not even looking at it. What is she looking at? She's looking at me because where's permission going to come from? It's going to come from me. She could stare at the treat all day long. The treat won't give her permission to eat it. Callie hasn't figured that out yet. Now, if you look at Casey's face, can you tell that I have her undivided attention? You see that look on her face? That should be the look on your face when your teachers are talking to you. Undivided attention. I have their, her attention because she knows I'm about to tell her something very important. And to her, that important information is when can she eat that tree? But your teachers tell you important things every day. And if you're not paying attention, you're missing some really cool stuff. Okay. So of all the different tricks the dogs have done for you today, which one of them... The tricks, do you think, was the most difficult to teach them? I will tell you, the treat on their paw was not the most difficult to teach. Stop, drop, and roll. No, but that's a great guess. Uh -huh. Feeling the door to see if it's hot? No, but that's another good guess. You're exactly right. Crawling under the smoke. When Casey was crawling, what was she crawling under? What was really there? Yeah. Nothing. We were pretending. Now think about that. If you were standing here and one of your friends was over there and your friend said, hey, come here, would you get on the floor and crawl over to him? Yeah. No, that wouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for the dogs to crawl for no reason either. If there was something there that they had to crawl under, that would be a completely different thing. But 
they, to teach them to, to crawl for no reason is difficult, which is why Callie is still working on that. So when you go home today, you're going to ask mom and dad when the last time was that they checked your smoke detectors. You're going to ask them when the last time was that they changed the batteries. They don't remember. It's been too long. Also, if you don't know where your meeting place is, talk to mom and dad about where your meeting place needs to be. Then, and then have mom or dad walk through the house with you and show you what are the safe ways for you to get out of the house. Just because you have a window doesn't mean that that's a safe way out. And you don't want to figure out that it's not when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you think it's going to be your way out and it's not. Okay, that's, that's very important. So we need to say some thank yous. First of all, for your school administration for letting us come and spend time with you. Give them a round of applause. Anytime you have an opportunity, you see a firefighter that's not actively working, but you know maybe he's in uniform or you know he's there, he or she or a firefighter, go up and tell them thank you. They work really hard to prepare themselves to make sure that they're, they're there for you in your time of need. You have one of your ex-fire chiefs here in Waldron. My father-in-law, Larry Taylor, is sitting right over there with his wife. And he was a firefighter here for many, many years. He got up, left his family during times when, when he probably didn't want to help leave the family to come and help you. So anytime you have an opportunity to do that, to say thank you to a firefighter or a police officer, make sure you take that opportunity. Also, our, our sponsor, Course in Fire and Security, they're the ones who put the support behind us that we can travel to schools all over the country and not charge the schools anything. Because it doesn't make sense for a, a, school to, a school's financial ability to come into play when we're teaching fire and life safety. That just doesn't seem to make sense to us. So our sponsor, Course in Fire and Security, supports us and allows us to travel the country and teach more than 400,000 young people every year. Give them a round of applause. The dogs and I are going to be out in the hallway. They're going to be lying down. So as you walk by them, first of all, watch your steps. Make sure that you don't step on paws and tails and noses because they're going to be lying down. Whichever dog you want to pet, you're going to hold your hand with your fingers and thumb tucked underneath. Let that dog smell your hand and then you, then you can pet them. We always walk around the front of the dogs. We don't ever step over any part of the dogs. And we never try to walk between them because if you fell, you could land on them and hurt them. I hope... You guys have a very safe school year. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Have a great day.